All right, we're still going through the elections, of course, looking at the state elections and uh, national, rather, state assembly elections at uh, this period on iBrand TV. And uh, we are still joined right here in the studio by Gani Kayade Balogo, who is a public affairs analyst and, uh, of course, is looking at all of the issues surrounding the ongoing elections in the 28th state of the Federation with us. So we were talking about voter apathy. Now, in 2019, about 72 million PVCs were collected, and we saw about uh, that was the, uh, about 28 million people voting eventually. Yeah. Now, in 2023, we had about 87.2 million PVCs collected, and a lot of Nigerians, uh, political pundits, analysts were optimistic, saying, "Wow, this is a huge number," and so we expected the voter yes. turnout to be larger. But lo and behold, we had a meager 24 million people voting. And so I'm going back to the statement you made earlier, saying that if we have the 34%, it would be fantastic. Looking at all of the pre precedents, the fact that we've been having more people have their votes counting before now, and the 2023 elections looks like the lowest. Before now, 2019 was described as the lowest voter turnout. Now we're having the 2023 supersede that despite the fact that there had been predictions that it would be higher. How do you describe 34% as fantastic in all of this? Well, basically I based it on what happened uh, three weeks ago. Because like you said, a lot of young people came into the brackets. They were captured for the first time. And most of them were excited and eager to vote. But it seems that that particular demography is skewed to certain areas of the country. And uh, once you realize that the attention span of the average young man is about five minutes, mm -hmm. the joy or the novelty of voting has worn off. And most of them will simply not be coming out this time. It's not the same level of intensity. Whatever was driving them three weeks ago no longer drives them now. You know, it's a two-way thing. Mm. Some people would say what drove them the last time may not drive them now. While some other people would say that because they feel like they were cheated the last time and they feel like some of the things, some of the expectations were not met, that this time around they would want to give it all it takes, ensure that they are out there to show INEC that even though you didn't give us our expectations the last time, we are ready to do all we can to ensure that our votes count this time around. It's not, you the, don't see it's, that it's not the job of INEC to give you what you want. No, but, but, but if you look at the fact that INEC talked about uh, uploading the results to the uh, IREV and all of those issues, uh, the, some these youths they are talking about are also saying that this time around they want to ensure, because INEC has promised that all of those chemistries would be corrected this time around. So they are saying that we would be on ground to make sure that those skirmishes are actually corrected? Yeah, skirmishes will happen. Uh, systems will fail. There's nothing you can do about it. So, so you don't see anything changing? People have to learn to cope with disappointments. You don't win all the time. And you don't go to an election with the messiah mindset that is either my way or the highway. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. Half of America is still going through the same process. Something in psychology they call the seven stages of grief. That means you go into a contest with a particular expectation. If the expectation does not meet your standard elements, you tend to go into depression. A lot of our young people went into depression and they have to go through the seven stages. The last stage, of course, as you know, is acceptance. But they are not there yet. Again, like I said, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. Half of America have not gotten over the 2019, uh, what, what year did Biden came? They've not gotten over that particular election. Because of, half of America thought that Trump won. So it's not really, when I'm using the terms, it's not to denigrate our young ones. It happens all over the world. Even at our age, I know people who have not accepted the 1979 election that she really won. So that will probably go on for the next 30, 40 years. That's an aside. The reason why I'm optimistic at 34% is what I've told you. A lot of people will stay back because a lot of people came out because they were driven by a particular agenda. That agenda was not achieved. And because it was not achieved, they see no reason 
I so, so you don't think that all of the promises that INEC made is enough to make them want to even, uh, believe in the system look, once again? Even if the beavers worked, RF worked, the result will probably be the same. Some people will still not come out. But as I'm saying, let us, for the sake of arguments, so, agree. So, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let us, for the sake of arguments, agree that everything worked and the result was still the same. Some people will still not come out. Indeed, we know that there is that so that's percentage said, of people who will not based come on out. Those who but, came out three weeks ago, mm. that if we should have 35 to 40 percent uh, turnout this time, I will be very happy. So, based on that reality, you know, three weeks ago, a lot of Nigerians had hope, very high hope that with so much that have been put into this election, it will be successful. Some persons who were at the pulling unit had issues where they couldn't upload results to the IRA. Mm. And looking at what they did, they were even sharing data, even sharing their hotspot, just to make sure that that process is seen to a logical conclusion. How could it be that even when results couldn't go on the IREF, and yet results were being read, that election actually happened in some location? Don't you think the youths who were so much enthusiastic, like my colleague said, will be willing to come out? Again, uh, I, I like it when people own adjectives, but it's not true. When you say most Nigerians, some Nigerians have high hopes that the IRF or the other one will make a difference. But older folks like us know that in every election, the paper trail is more important. The paper trail starts from your, what do you call that? PVC? No, uh, the, your ballot PVC, the ballot paper, and then those who record it, those who announce it, until it gets to the final results. To a lot of Nigerians, the process was fine. The innovation was a distraction. They did fail in some areas, of course, but they did fail to such a level that will invalidate the results. Of course not. So that's why I keep saying that we keep living in a bubble created by the social media to think the entire world is about our world. It's not true. I traveled all over Nigeria simply because of the nature of my job. And I do know, like I told you earlier, that a substantial number of young Nigerians in certain parts of the country are not on social media at all. So let's so let the word most is what I have a problem with. Because it keeps giving the impression that you are possessing our commonwealth. You know, one of the so, reasons... Some Nigerians, Nigerians, some Nigerians were eager to vote based on those innovations. Now, the innovations failed in some places. Not in all places. Or else, we will not have had any election at all. Yeah, but you say that the innovation was not uh, welcome or something I like said, that. I said people are going to call today mm. and they are going to use the paper trail. Mm. that is already lined down to go to court. Despite the, fail, uh, the failure to upload on the beavers in some areas. Okay, I read. So that's the problem we face. No, no same person will sit down and keep lamenting about what is past. When even the major players have, you know, they were not asking. They are now getting from my neck proof of the paper trail of the election. That's what they are going to court with to show that they won. They are not going to the court saying that they are going to get IREF to tell them, no, 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 no. We have to tell our viewers at home because some people will take what we say as gospel truth and fly with it. So would you say that innovation of Beavers isn't a step in the right direction for these elections? The introduction of any technology that makes it easier. Personally, I wish that we could go back to our phones. I want to vote from my bed. I want to well, take my Nigeria phone. Hasn't gotten to that point. Precisely. <laughs> that that, you are now getting my point. Any new innovation will have hiccups. Mm. And because there will be hiccups... But I mean we shouldn't try? Will be, uh, we tried. But, sir, you know, we tried, but it's not the in-all and end-all that a lot of people are trying to make it look like. But, sir, if because, you... I'm, I'm sorry. Because, like I said, the people who lost or who were perceived to have lost are going to court, not because of RF. They are going to court because they are going to collate the papers that are available right now 
for the same election and take it to courts to prove their case. But the Beavers is also instrumental to what they're it's doing. It's instrumental to whatever they've done, but they cannot go to court based solely on that. They still have to get the papers, the physical aspect of the election, and get it there. Well, I'm just saying that Beavers has helped in moving the what electoral Beaver, What process. Beavers has helped to do, which you and I know, is to reflect the true number of, of the accredited voters. voters. That, which is, of course, a great improvement. That, isn't it? But you get a step at a time. It's not the day you are born that you start working. But people treat it as if the, because the beaver failed, the election has failed. It. That is not true. That is ludicrous. But you, you are quite aware that during the elections, some people said that when it comes to the um, National Assembly, uh, uh, what's it called? House of Assembly elections, it went through. But upon, you know, uploading the presidential election, that was where the issue failed. Now the question is, why did it have to fail when it got to that particular point? Because I drove my car to a place, and the car was fine. And I entered the car back two hours later, and the car refused to work. Remember, they are not going to use the same configuration for the two. This one is direct. This one is local. You have to understand that. They have to do three configurations for the elections. Presidential, House of Reps, and Senate. It's not the same coalition. It's not the same thing that is done. So if two works and one did not work, I'm not saying it did not work or that the top they don't quote me. I'm saying that let's work under the assumption that it is truly failed. What has that what, what has that changed anything fundamental from what the people who lost are going to take to court? It's still the question I'm asking people. Fine. Let us forget all the conspiracy theories that people have been bothering about. Let us pretend that it truly failed on that day. Just for the me and I, let's pretend it failed. Let's agree. Are you saying it didn't fail? No, no, no. Let's agree that it failed. Because a lot of people have questions. Like I said, a lot of people, going to the toilet for some people is conspiracy theory. Because if the water does not flow, somebody somewhere must have sat down. Because they knew it was coming to the toilet and make sure the water did not flow. People are just happy to speculate. It's, it's part of our curiosity. As are you aware that there were areas where even the INEC of officials were not able to operate the Beavers machine? Precisely. That's what we said earlier. It is a machine. It is a machine. And they were trained to do it. If they failed, either the machine failed or the personnel failed, there is still failure. And that's what the court will decide. So are you saying that we should have maybe gone the traditional way of using just the ballot paper? We are still using the ballot papers. The technology is basically to ensure that whatever is captured at the polling booth is what will be reflected mm. at the end of the day. It's not changing the fundamentals of voting at all. It's basically <laughs> created to ensure that if I stay in my house at Ojokoro in Berkeley Estates, and I voted. I can go to sleep knowing fully well that I can see it. The technology is not new. When you go for Hajj in Saudi Arabia, you can track your plane. You can track the way you are well, the day you are going to be picked up. That's what people are asking for. So part of it failed. Fine. It will get better the next time. But it doesn't mean the world ended that day. Okay, That's so you agree that it is a good innovation, but we have to improve again, on it. Again, like every innovation, there will be downsides. And Jack Ode said something that I hold very dear. He said the Nigerian politician is the smartest in the world. If you make a law in the morning, they are willing to break it by 12 noon. I can assure you, if I can pay you free money, that whatever surprises Divas and I left through up three weeks ago must have been neutralized by now. Yeah, but I, well, I, I, I just want us to establish something. Are you saying that the Beavers innovation is a step in the right direction, but we need to be patient for it to be We, we need not only to be patient, mm. we need to know that it has not replaced, it's basically to enhance. Because the way people talk, including my brother here, is that that's the, that the lost stone. That is the, what is the, that thing in the Bible? That's the only grail. That, that is the only thing that guarantees that the election was free. No. Uh, let, let's it's move not. away from uh, the beavers now and talk about the voters, uh, especially when you look at the fact that there were threats, even recently, uh, from different, you know, non-state actors saying that if you're not voting for a particular party, that you shouldn't come out to vote. 
how does that come to you in a state where we're trying to deal with voter apathy and we're trying to let people know that their votes will count? How will he or his uh, henchmen enforce that 7 million people will not come out to vote if they have the mind to do so? But, but what confidence? Where is that confidence coming from in the first place? I leave my house in the morning. I have no confidence I will return. But I still do it. People should learn that there will always be threats. It's up to you as the receiver of that threat to determine whether what you are going to do is worth it for you to go out and do it. Like I said, if only we, even there, if there are no other ethnicities, and it's just between the European nations, there will still be threats based on indigenous. There will be threats based on churches or mosques. There will, be, there will always be threats. You cannot escape from it. The threats now may be ethnicized or regionalized. But in a, in a local government, where they speak the same language, they go to the same church, they are from the same family, somebody will still wake up one day and say, if you don't vote for, because it's your senior brother, don't come out. Yeah, but why shouldn't there be some form of apprehension? We expect security agents. What the, the statement from, hold on, the statement from the commissioner of police, after that public video, was to say that they are investigating it. You'd expect that with that kind of public glaring affront that the security agencies would pick up such a person for investigations. Do you know something called the deep fake? Have you heard of it before? When somebody will do a video that will be so real that you will believe the person. I have one where they did for Obama. And it was so real until Obama denied it. Because it was his voice, it was his, the same mouth move, it's a matter of journey. I'm not saying this is what happened, I'm just giving an example. That's why the police will tell you that they will investigate. It's not just one, several. Just example, it could be 500. Yeah. The police will still investigate. Well, the point you are trying to make, which I understand, I wish I knew with you, is that he ought to have been invited. Mm -hmm. But even with the invitation, all he has to do is deny. And because even happened. people who haven't done as much as that get invited give to, me, to, me, to answer questions. Give me three names. You, to, we're talking about even when it comes to financial crimes uh, and there are allegations that is, pointing that, those, towards those, someone. Those are you get, crimes. So this is a video. We if, see it. It's out there on social media. A it? lot of Nigerians have seen it. And the question is, why is it, is it a case of animal farm where some animals are greater or more important than some animals yeah. and then some people do not get to get questioned for their actions? Again, you are getting emotive. You are not a police officer. I'm not, but I, and I'm... a police I'm, officer I'm, will tell you, listen. Mm. <laughs> police officer will tell you. And don't forget, answers. What about police assuming that somebody we are in dreads is already automatically a criminal? And you are telling me that the video of a man with a son, I have a son who wears dress, and uh, automatically he's a criminal. So, I have a video of him uh, using dress, and then you know, I just call the police to arrest him. So, he's inviting him, already criminalizing him. Precisely, inviting because, him like I said, if you listen to what I said, yeah. and I agree with you, the only thing they could do is invite him, but it doesn't mean they will not investigate. And all he has to do is deny. But up to, up to now, we've not seen any indication up to that he's now, been up, invited. Up to We're now, here of being investigated. Up to now, up to this moment, mm. the man still has rights. He's not a criminal yet. He's not being indicted. Even when he makes I, his no, I hate it when, I hate it when people force me to defend something that's no, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you should but defend him. But I'm not defending him. I'm, defend, I'm defending the process because tomorrow it could be you. So we are, we are on TV. We are on live TV. There's something you could say here that some people can twist. You know why I'm saying this? I know why you are saying this, and I'm As telling you yesterday, why. Yesterday, by 10 p.m., I was on a platform where even some groups were strategizing as regards how to curb this issue. And a lot of, you know, advice that came in for ladies moving group. Because you never can tell. Someone was saying that this same man that we allege does not give any threat without actualizing it. So you are saying now that everyone should go about their lawful business, acting as if though this will not come? You have to understand that freedom was built on the blood of matters. You cannot get freedom if you are not willing to fight for it. I'm using this philosophical thing basically as a guide, not to advise you to do that. Mm. Your freedom is basically yours if you fight for it. And that's what I started with. How can one man stop 7 million voters from voting? Nobody has answered that question. 
Well, even if he has 100,000 henchmen, mm. how can 100,000 henchmen stop a determined 7 million voters? Well, you already made the point that there's even no way for him to find out who you voted for. Is but I'm just concerned about the position of security agencies and all of this. But let's not dwell too much on that. Let's talk about the politics and the elections going on right now in Lagos, which is, of course, a hotbed for the elections as we speak and it's a three-man horse race between uh the you know pdp apc and the labor party but how do you think all of this would affect the next dispensation we know that uh, there have been talks about how uh you need uh, a lot of uh you know experience when it comes to governing a state like lagos but how do you think lagosians are responding to all of the politicking going on well people have big sides which is unfortunate and what, well, whoever wins, the consequences will be felt down the line 20, 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the danger of all the rhetorics that is going on. And uh, the, uh, the, like I said, it's normal for this season for people to drag up ethnicities or religion. It's part and parcel of the democratic process. But once the elections are over, normally everybody will congregate around the winner. To move the state forward. Before you move on, let me quickly take you up on the uh, ethnicity and religiosity going on, especially right now. It looks to be more intense this time around, and one would wonder why. Because uh, we should be moving towards issue based politics, talking about what are the things that Lagos needs to move forward. How do we generate more power? How do we fix the roads? How do we ensure that uh, the flood issues is being taken care of? Those are the issues that should be looked at. But this time around, it looks like ethnicity and religion has taken over the politics in Lagos. It's part, it's part of the season. You can't really run from it. This time, the only difference is that it's on the surface. Mm -hmm. Normally, it will be on the fringes. Mm. And then the majority will now do what you said. But, and it's not peculiar, what they call the nativity. It's going on, it's going on all over the world. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. The white American male right now is feeling threatened because in the next few years you become a minority in the u.s where you used to be number one so you now do anything possible to ensure that it doesn't become irrelevant that is an understandable logic no matter how much you pretend it's not the american male will be a minority by the by the time of the next election not the, not the white people though. sorry the american white male will become a minority in America. That means the other ethnicities and the women. There will be more of them, and that means they can now drive the narration forward for the American people. No. And they will resist it. And it's happening in Germany. It's happening in Japan. Nativity is crawling into our politics, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. Indigenous people are asserting themselves about what settlers are bringing in and resisting it. Even in London. No, nobody will tell you publicly, but we know the undercurrents of how London runs and how the Asian people are starting getting more power and how they are being resented. That you cannot wish away. Not only popular to Lagos. I was in Owari, and I know Owari man was telling me that all the people had bought up all the lands in Owari. Same thing with Portacot. When I used to live in Rumola, and uh, the people locally would tell me what the Igbos and the Wereds are doing to them. On a smaller scale, but you cannot wish it away. Don't let's pretend to ourselves. Yeah, but why is it more intense this time around? It is, when the, you it see is, it is the season. I've answered the question already. I said, normally this will happen. It but happens. I, I, the I, question I, is, why is it heightened this time around? We expect that with all of the enlightenment, sensitization, and all of the awareness that went on, you know, towards the election, that people would be more you know, enlightened towards what they actually, the questions they I actually have to ask. What you mean by enlightened? Are you saying people are not more educated what politically? What has education got to do with my... Uh, no, I mean when it comes to getting informed about how, uh, you know, uh, those who you are putting into office, the things you should require of them. Why do you think Fox News was so popular? And why do you think another station in Lagos was popular now? Because people go to news channels to get validation. They've made up their minds. Don't, don't get I could deliver a lecture on this that will take hours. People have already made up their minds what to do. They go to stations that validate their positions. So, why is everybody enlightened? It doesn't really matter. 
my self-interest, like Barista will say, sometimes your self-interest will override your sense of logic. Does, so so like does that have anything to do with your yeah, religion it, it, also? It, it has to do with religion, it has to do with ethnicity, it has to do... Some people just set you the way you dress, or the way you talk, or the way you look. It, there's no rhyme or reason. You just have to accept it. As part of our money. So you're saying so there's no going away from this. You are not running away from it. So how about this? That's why I said the danger. Sorry. Right. That's why the danger will be felt. 20, 30 years. Normally, it, this will disappear after the election. Mm -hmm. But the toxic that we are going through is so much that you take about a generation to weed it out of our system. Because the genie is already out of the bottle. And I'm being frank here. That's the reality we face. When people tell me people are enlightened, the constitution, those things are just jokes to entertain small people. People are primordial because that's who they are. So there's nothing like one Nigeria. Is that and what you're saying? There's never anything like one Nigeria. I have not met a Nigeria. I met a Nigeria carrying a Nigeria passport, don't get me wrong. But I'm not I'm yet to meet a Nigeria. I meet an Igbo person, I meet a Yoruba person, I meet an Edo person. And everyone say when I talk about Yoruba, I know a Yoruba boy who <laughs> Whose mother was uh, another tribe, whose wife was another tribe, whose grandmother was another tribe, yet he carries it on his head. So don't, don't let's fool ourselves. Don't let's pretend that we don't know this is the reality we live. So talk, to us, okay, go on. talk to us about the fact that, of course, we know, like you said, when it comes to election, it is a norm for people to start lacing up you know, elections with uh, ethnicity, religion, and all of that. But talk to us about this issue of God for that reason. Because I've got to listen to one or two of these opposition parties and they say their reason of not associating with this particular party is as a result of not getting a second approval from the Godfather. And of course, there's this you know, notion in the air that Lagos, as we speak, has been ruled by proxy by one man for close to 20 years. Don't you think that's also logical? At least for development to thrive, for a governor to run without getting a second approval. Do you know that in Jigawa, Sule Lamido is running, his son is running. Do you know that in Delta, one man has been in charge of the state since 1999. He's been installing governors, removing them. I can name nothing less than seven states. So what you are saying is not peculiar to Lagos. Does it, does it make it okay? No, it's not a matter of being okay. It's a matter of expanding your mind to know that it's not peculiar. The problem I face with younger journalists is this. We assume that there is no history. And what is happening now is new. There was a time in Lagos that Yoruba and Ibu brought cutlasses to kill each other as far back as 1954. There was a time in Lagos where a royal father issued a threat that if people do not vote for a preferred candidate, they will be hauled into a lagoon. And the royal father, is there a royal father for the entire Lagos state or for Lagos Island? Did the owner of Kedja issue that threat? Did the Alangbun of Okorodu issue the threat? Did the Akram of Baragri issue the threat? Did the, which other thing is there? Because again, you micromanage information and you now turn it to a national thing. The king that made the threat was talking to his chiefs in his palace on an island in a state that the island is a very small part of. And then you come, the people come to me and said, he said he will throw, because he, can, he doesn't have the power to throw you into the lagoon in the Putemeta, for example, because the Awori has their own king. He doesn't have the right to throw you into the lagoon in the Kurodu, because the other daddy said he will throw you into the lagoon. I'm not against the question you are raised. I'm just saying stop assuming that one person's opinion represents the whole. It is not true. And this is what is killing the young ones. So should we not move beyond that you idea of allowing one place. person to dictate rather than allowing uh, the people one, to one, choose who one, they want? One person will dictate. Nigeria has been under, I wrote a piece that really got me into trouble. I call it Nigerian PLC. And normally I'll write a satire. I'm still going to write it for this election. He's basically looking at Nigeria as a company and the president as a CEO. And, but we know those who own Nigeria because the soldiers never left. That's the reality. Until this election, a soldier has always been on the ballot. Mm. Until this right. election. Let, I, I, can, I can deliver, I can sit here and deliver for you 18 hours straight on Nigeria history to tell you why this is not peculiar. All right. And nothing is happening now that has not happened before. All right, we will definitely will uh, continue that conversation, but we have to now uh, speak uh, with our correspondent at Ibafo, that's uh, Caroline Elegalam.
Uh, good morning, Caroline. Bring us up to speed on the situation of things in Ebafo. Caroline, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, tell us what's happening in Ebafo. So, uh, Okay, I'm currently at the uh, police station cooling unit. I stand behind. Okay, it looks like that's quite distorted. Uh, we might have to get back to Caroline, of course, uh, when that is fixed. But she is right there. Uh, from what I pick, from what she said, that she is at the police station police station polling unit and of course we'll see how that pans out the last elections actually the presidential national assembly this particular polling unit not this the one before this that um, the Ibafo market square where she also covered the last time don't have any INEC presence okay. they were disenfranchised yes so and that happened for some other polling units too and so what we're talking about and voter turnout today as well so when we're talking about voter turnout it's not a question of people not wanting to come out. This time it's looking like more of people coming out and then not being given that opportunity to vote. Okay, tell, tell me this. Do you know any, apart from the Southeast, for obvious reasons that you cannot mention it, do you know any particular P polling units that scored 100% when the, that's why the fact that I never got there on time and the, everything was correct. Most of them, the average we have, and I have the figures, I'm going to do. It's about 150, 180. But in that case, at least you know that I never have well, done all that you need to I'm do. I'm taking you back to your question. Yes, and I'm also responding this, to this. This is part of the problem, not the whole problem. That's why I gave you that analogy. The not going somewhere or not appearing at all are uh, what they call fallouts. But it's avoidable, and in, and in isn't court, it? And in a court of law, the judge will discount it, basically, in the, in the entire picture. They're okay. The Charles didn't vote, Paul didn't vote, but ten others voted. On the aggregate, will this carries the vote. Will these two make any difference in the result? No. Then we'll let the results stand. But are we sure that like those that. people that were disenfranchised wouldn't have made a difference? Because no, when you look at twenty four million voting out of uh, eighty seven so point two are million people me, you, are collected. you are telling me that the places that Adnan did not go represent the seventy eight million people. That did not vote. No, I'm saying that they could have contributed largely mm, to the outcome. I just want to know, do you, you may have the figures I don't have, that the thing was so massive that those people that were disenfranchised would make a fundamental difference. So are you making little of the fact that Nigerians, electorate, who had the constitutional right to exercise their franchise, were disenfranchised. Are you making it? Are you making light of the fact that they were not able somebody, to cast their Somebody ballot? has ruled this country with 30% turnout. Is the majority of that 30% that are elected, and they ruled for eight years. We shouldn't normalize those kind of things. And I'm not even talking about Nigeria. I'm talking about the US. So I'm to, the fact that it happened to the US doesn't make it right. Mm. Voter party cannot be curtailed because there is freedom. I can choose to get the PVC because it may affect my business down the line. And it's not to vote. Should we go the way of Australia? You know, in places like Australia where it is mandatory for you to vote. And uh, when you don't vote, you have some consequences to face. Do you and think if you, if you make it mandatory, mm. what's the guarantee that the results you get will still not be... The same thing you are getting now. Mm -hmm. People reflect. That's why Yoruba people say, uh, not Yoruba people, uh, it, uh, Voice Populi Force Day is the voice of the people. That's the voice of God. Mm -hmm. That means, on the average, any psychologist will tell you that, on the average, whatever the majority tends to like, tends to represent what most of them likes. All right, now that's the way it works. Sir, are you, you have to, like I said, sorry again. I don't know why it's you. I'm always in the <laughs> and I apologize. No, you have the floor. Go ahead, sir. You have to separate voter parties from failure to go to certain polling units, from people's desire not to come out, from people's being afraid, as you said, because they were threatened. All these have to factor in for why there's voter party. Not one particular reason. It's not done because what they have learned in management is that any decision based on emotion tends to be false. It may be popular. 
Uh, go down the line, it's false. Uh, uh, hold on, no, thoughts. Then we have to join no, our correspondent, our correspondent, Caroline Legalam, uh, who is right there at Ibafo for us. Caroline, good to have you back. Tell us what's going on at that polling unit. <laughs> All right, so like I said earlier, voting here is going, is ongoing and it's peaceful. Just that the turnout is low compared to what happened during the presidential election. What time is the voting start? Okay, sorry that I'm past now. Okay, so the voting start is okay. so, so not a repeat of what happened. So this is the last it election. all nine. Okay, see. I don't know about the for Market Square. Have you been there this morning? Is there any INEC presence? Oh. Okay, looks like Caroline cannot hear me. I don't know if you can't see. Okay, <laughs> some glitches there, but of course, uh, she's I, been I, I, bringing I think us. I should start the business of a prophet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> bringing us up to speed on what's going on. I don't know where we are. I thought you were using one example, and I told you it doesn't work. Where are, we, where are we? Like I said, I am a, I'm a realist. I've been around a long time. I'll be 60 tomorrow. So I've been around a long time. I've been in journalism for Well, so that'll be cake. Uh, no cake here. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, you said tomorrow now. Uh, if, uh, if somebody gave me cake yesterday on another program, uh, okay. because they know I'll be there. We like to leave the best for the so, last part. So the point I'm making is this. We should, as journalists, ask the tough questions. But put it in the greater level mm. so people will understand better. Because mm. most of the time, and it's not only you guys, we all suffer from it. I have my own biases. But as an analyst, I must put those biases aside mm. and look at it plainly. And when you look at it plainly, I have a, a boss who told me that if you take decisions based on facts, you'll be 99% correct all the time. That every day you're angry at this point, don't take that, don't strike that ball, don't do anything, just relax. Then look at the facts. Chances are the decision you take is the correct one. So I just want Nigerians to know that, like I said earlier, based on your question. Okay, you wanted to ask me another question. Yeah, that was when we were at the entertainment. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, now, looking at the fact that, let's move over to FCT. There will be no state assembly elections in the FCT. No. What do you think about, you know, individuals, I mean, residents and indigenous that will be disenfranchised? They know the law. They know the law before they move there. That was creation of law. What if some people were born there? It doesn't matter. Aside from the fact that some might have moved there due to job. What, the, what you think is happening to Abuja has also happened to Washington, D.C. Mm. We had people that are now looking for statehood. Mm. Even in Washington. They, don't have, they have a, I think they have a House of Rep member. They have a statehood, but they don't have a governor. The Constitution actually even so, confess the whole, you know, governance of so Abuja to so the federal government. The, the, so federal government the, the National way. Assembly is supposed to be the uh, House, state assembly yeah. for the federal capital territory. But let's uh, wrap this up by talking about uh, the traditional ruler. You know, we've been talking about ethnicity, religion. There was a traditional ruler, that's uh, the Etiosa local government, who talked about, you know, carrying out traditional rights, that's the Oro. And he said that that would end before the elections. Yeah. But that, of course, and raised and agitation. Yeah. Yes. And but, but what do you make of those kind of... Some people have said uh, he, he, prob he probably clashed with the elections because the elections were uh, postponed from the March 11th initial date. But what do you make of all of these uh, comments and agitations that this kind of statement or moves generate? They've been, they've been doing Oro for the last 500 years. Most people don't even know that they do Oro. They just inform you and you make sure you don't stay out at night. It's because of politics. Like I said, these are fallouts of this season that we are in. In two months, another town will do and nothing will happen. In three months, another town will do People do it all the time. So you don't subscribe to the comments or the agitation? Well, the social because... media has given a lot of, I don't, I don't know whether I'm allowed to use the word, morons, a key to have opinions that they don't normally have. Because when you look at something, you will have to wait with the background. Either it's cultural or even professional mm -hmm. that we are doing it. And then you don't know, comment. Just don't go and assume. And I'm talking about junior, I'm talking about very senior journalists who are calling it political rule. And it's stupid because you wonder. Uh, you have to now temper your uh, <laughs> no, you know, use of words. I'm the OCR on Kaka of Yoruba Land. <laughs> and a very senior chief 
of this particular education. Mm. But you cannot see that me. I've not you called me Mister. I've not been called Mister in thirty years. Mm. But do you see me complain? Mm. Because I'm here as a professional journalist. Mm. When I step aside, you can't call me Mister. That would be a problem. It would be a sacrilege. Mm. But I'm here as a journalist, and journalists don't have titles. Now nobody will now say because you don't call me. Uh, Akobo, you don't call me uh -huh. You have been insulted. But not everyone might know you to have some. Now, just even some girls, somebody out there will take offense. Mm. But on my behalf, it's not me. But somebody out there watching will say, How can they call him GKB? I'm calling him by name. How does that start? You know who he is. <laughs> All right, GKB, we have to wrap this up. Start, somebody will not start a war. Mm. That's how it starts. The other who does this know that exactly the two end at 5 30. Because I know who cannot see sunrise. So, when someone said that it's going to affect the election, I said, it can't be this. It can't be this slow. Mm, okay. <laughs> I think that's a better word. But let, no, let's just... Because the Oro cannot be seen in the afternoon. An Oro cannot be cannot see sunrise. That's a great tradition. But you also have to understand that not everybody understands how this is They should work. learn. They should ask. Don't just assume because you have a phone and turn on that data that you have an opinion. It's not true. That's why I give you my own example. People outside there will fight. See, because somebody's called me by name. You know, that doesn't matter because this is the job I do. But is it out of place for some persons to just reason and think that for the sake of this election, can it be postponed? There, are, thing, there are things that must be done at a particular time. If you're a cultural person, you will know that New Year Festival has a particular period. So you are telling me that if there's a New Year Festival that you must do within 30 days of harvest. This is the law in some communities. An election happens to be right in the middle, smack in the middle of the New Year Festival. They are not going to do it. But as long as you accuse you of eating yam, when you are supposed to be eating rice, that is a political New Year Festival. Because right now we are supposed to be eating Indomie and not yam. You have to, people have to apply number six to things they say. And I'm not talking about those even small boys. I'm talking about even senior journalists who want to know better, who get candidate with emotions. Instead of now trying to logically explain. Because I keep asking questions. Our job is four W's and H. Why? When? Why? How? That's what we do. That's our job as journalists. You must ask. And then if it doesn't fit into those particular things, then it's not news. That's why I'm asking you. So is it out of place to shift it? No, it's out, it, is out of, it is out of place. It is out of Because sometimes you have to do things... That I would because no for they shifted it for a week. It was meant to be last week. Mm. So they cannot shift it again. They didn't force Anek to shift the election. They assumed the election should be over. They've done the right thing. They cannot shift it again. It's a matter of asking. Go to the king or his media person. Say, KBS, why are you doing this? And they will explain that it was shifted once. It cannot be shifted again. So do you think, let's wrap this up by talking about uh, INEC. Do you think INEC is better prepared looking at some of the things we've seen? For instance, uh, this polling unit and some other polling units have already started elections as against the last elections where as at 12 noon, some polling units had not even started accreditation. Like I said, judges in the last 23 years have done what we are going to do again this year. They're going to look at those areas that INEC has failed. They are going to look at areas where they've passed. They are going to weigh the elections in those areas and see whether they are going to have fundamental effects on the general election. If not, the election starts. So this is part and parcel of the process of democracy. Even in India, they still steal ballot boxes, as you know. They still kill each other. And that's the biggest democracy in the world. They have about a billion people, for, for God's sake. Mm. That means the people are voting about 400 million people. Mm. And you think they will not, somebody will not die? Or there will be others where the ballot will not get to? Or there will be there will be accidents? Let us be... I, well, I like the fact that young people are interested. But let them base their interest on grounded facts. You've not answered my question. Which one? Do you think INEC is better prepared they for are, this they election? Are, they are better prepared there will be problems. Mm. That's why I gave you that answer. All there right. are those challenges that they will face, where they will fail. If it does not fundamentally affect the election. All right. I think that, that's a fine place to anchor it. Thank you so much, Gani Kayade Balogun, Public Affairs Analyst, for the insightful analysis this morning. <laughs>